Hey guys, my name is Javier Perez, and I'm currently a senior material artist at PlayStation's Visual Arts Service Group. I've been in the industry for about nine years now. In this final lesson, we'll be taking everything that we've created in this video series and create a small little environment that we can use for our portfolios. I'll be covering techniques, thought processes, and general understanding of how this environment was made. So let's get started. So here we have the final scene and what we're going to try to replicate. Um, right now I have a cinema camera actor, so that's why we're getting that nice depth of field and the bokeh. I added a few settings to get those or that result. But if we just stop piloting this guy and we can kind of zoom out and see what's going on in the scene, uh, there's not really a lot going on here. Um, I'm just going to uh, get out of game mode, see what's going on. So we just have a couple lights. Um, we have the two splines here, um, some fog and just some pretty preliminary meshes. Um, we're still using that same rock wall that we used with our first tutorial. Um, we have the foliage that we just finished up in the last tutorial. And then that same uh, rock material, I applied it to some meshes that I had um, created uh, previously before this tutorial. So feel free to either create one for your, yourself or just download it off um, one of the many websites out there. Um, here's a dirt material applied to the spline road. So kind of what we were doing there. And a lot of it, it's, it's basically just being hidden with the fog. So we're just trying to get that sense of there's a bigger, fuller environment here. So to begin, um, let's just go ahead and start off with a blank slate. Let's go ahead into file, new level. And for this guy, we're just gonna start off with a completely empty level, nothing in it. So let's go ahead and choose that. And the first thing I'd like to do is I'm just gonna hit save and then save the current as. We're just gonna name this, um, let's see, NVIDIA 34 demo. Cool. That way, if anything crashes or anything, we will have backups automatically generated. So I'm just gonna hit unlit on this guy. So nothing really going on here. Um, one of the first things I like to do with these kinds of uh, scenes is um, instead of creating the whole background and getting that sort of feel to it, we're just gonna go into all classes and then we're gonna start typing out HDRI backdrop. So we're gonna just click and drag into our scene. Um, first thing I wanna do is just make sure this is zero zeroed out. And this essentially is giving us a nice um, just background and some uh, lighting to go with it. So we get that sense of um, just like a full environment here. We have the backdrop and everything. And it, it gives us a subtle um, HDR and then it affects the lighting a little bit as well. So uh, first thing I want to do is let's go ahead and change this guy. So I'm going to try to find something that's um, I'm liking a little bit better for this scene. So the first thing I want to do is let's go ahead and search. And when we click on the magnifying glass, we get a few different options to choose from. So you can go ahead and drag these guys into here. That one's looking kind of interesting. One other place that has these guys is um, if you go ahead and view options and show engine content, show plugin content, we can actually scroll down into our HDRI backdrop and we'll have, oh, well, we're already in here. But once we actually select one of these, we can go into here and then we'll have way more available here. So we can go into this desert outer. And I believe this is the same one that I used for um, the final environment as well. So let's go ahead and keep this one. Um, next up, one other thing I'd like to do for this guy is just general environment things I like to do is um, set up a post-process volume. So we're going to do that by going into the volumes. We're going to make sure to look for post-process and we're just going to drag this guy in here. Again, just trying to zero everything out that way it's easier to find. Now, instead of um, changing the bounding box to encompass the entire environment, what we're going to do is we're just going to look for bounds. We're going to put infinite extent. So this way it affects the entire scene, no matter where you are in the um, in the area or environment. 
go back and then one other thing now that we have this set up we can turn off that adaptive um, exposure so i'm just going to look for exposure here and we're going to make sure to keep min and brightness at one here next up let's start bringing in our actual content that we've created so far so we're just going to hop into our content and I'm using the same folders that I've used as we're creating this whole series. So I'm just looking for the mesh one and let's I believe it was this one right here. So I'm just going to bring this uh, rock wall in here. Again, set it to zero, zero, zero. Cool. Let's move it to the side. And let's go ahead and apply a material on here. So Go to our materials and let's do this instance here. Great. It's going to copy this a few times. So let's go ahead and turn on grid snapping and let's make this kind of small. Actually, let's make this maybe 100. Cool. I'm just going to grab this a few times here. Because this is instance, we can go ahead and change the tiling as we uh, find it suitable. We're starting to get that weird um, effect um, because of the tessellation that's going on on this guy. So what we can do is just grab some of these or any of these that are giving us that issue. Uh, let's double click on the actual mesh. Double click on here. Opens up the actual asset details window. So let's look for bounds here. And let's do on, I believe it's the X. Let's just bump that up to like two or something. Cool. And now we're not getting that flickering anymore. So we could either do that inside of the details pane or we could have easily selected each and every one of these meshes, uh, looked for the bounds in the details and just change the bounds to go here. So two different ways, so keep that in mind. Now that we have this rock wall, let's bring in our road. So I'm just gonna go back into our content folder and I'm just gonna go into my road. I believe it's this final one. So let's just bring this guy in here. Again, let's just set this to zero, zero, zero. And currently we don't see our mesh because like we set up in the blueprint until it's pulled out a certain amount, it's not going to bring in our actual mesh. So once we start pulling it out, we can kind of see what's going on here. So it's exactly what I was looking for. So now that we kind of relative idea of where this rock rock wall is, we can quickly um, just take off uh, grid snapping and just move it ever so slightly to where I think would be a good position. Just gonna move this over here. And cool. So again, I'm just gonna keep pulling this guy and I think around here, let's try to add like a nice bend here. So add a spline point here. Let's go ahead and grab this guy and start, there we go, bending this road a little bit. Go ahead and grab this guy and maybe just bring it in slightly and bring this guy in slightly as well. So we'll get like a harsh 90 degree turn here. Cool. Now, one thing you might not know in um, when I showed you the final um, environment is uh, I basically just duplicated this uh, once. So control C control V and I just moved it ever so slightly. So we get the impression that there's more of a ground than meets the eye. So we just want to make sure that there's no seam here. So let's actually go ahead and unlit. And um, I'm actually trying to find the seam. We see it slightly, but it's enough where once we start adding the foliage on top, you will probably will never know that it's there. So let's just lit that. Cool. So now we're starting to get something a little bit interesting here. If you guys want to see how the, your materials are reacting right now, we can easily just drop in a directional light really quickly. So uh, make sure to change it to movable. And we're just going to move this over a little bit. OK. 
kind of get turn off the snapping on the rotation here. So let's see. There we go. Just looking for something a little bit more dynamic here that gives us some nice shadows like right there is kind of interesting. And just kind of move it around. We're going to be tweaking this light slightly or more so we're going to be tweaking a lot of these guys towards the end. But for now, we just kind of want to see how these guys are reading right now. So that's looking pretty cool. All right. So now that we have this guy, what we can do is start bringing in our um, rock mesh. So again, this was just a mesh that I created um, outside this tutorial. So feel free to sculpt a box model or whatever you will to just create an interesting silhouette or shape. I basically, for this entire environment, just use a single rock. So uh, it's just duplicated uh, a bunch of times. Let's go ahead and um, apply our final rock material as well. So click on this guy, apply it to here. Cool. Just gonna rotate it. And again, we can just scale it, do anything crazy. At this point, I start kind of um, figuring out where I want my shot to be. So um, I'm just gonna move this over here. And I basically set up a camera. We're still getting a little bit of that flickering, so we're not gonna worry too much about it. But at this point, I'm actually going to bring in a um, cinematic camera. So that way we can have an idea of where our shot is and we could start moving this, these meshes according to what our camera is seeing. So let's go ahead and bring, actually let's delete this. What we can do is we can just hit create camera from hit cine cam, cinema camera actor. Okay. And let's go ahead and there we go. So let's just move this like right here would be interesting. I'm just gonna mess with the focal length a little bit. Just tweaking something. I want to be a, a slight zoomed in here. Maybe not so much. I think that's pretty good. So let's stop piloting this guy. We can go ahead and see, select that camera here. And now we can begin to move these rocks and duplicate them how we, uh, actually, sorry about that. Let me just click the camera and then we're gonna click this pin preview. And then there we go. So now let's go ahead and just move these guys willy-nilly to our liking here it's kind of interesting right there one thing that i did on our final version of this environment was i kind of wanted to have like some dynamic shape that's why we have that interesting looking almost like it's a tower or a cliff tower or something like that so i'm just going to try to replicate that a little bit here Just gives the impression that there's like a rock, another rock wall there or something like that. So maybe move it down slightly here. Cool. There we go. Okay. Let's go ahead and again duplicate. I'm just holding Alt and then dragging, which is making a duplicate here. Okay. Always looking at this to see how this is reading, etc., etc. Just trying to get some interesting shapes going on here. Interesting silhouettes. Cool. Kind of liking what's going on here. Let's go back into this flickering and see if we can mess with this a little bit more. Bounds. Yep. Set this to four or something. Save. 
Great. Now we're not getting that flickering. Perfect. Maybe we can scale this one slightly down. We do want to have that idea of large, medium, and small forms. So it's a good idea to scale some of these guys down and see what kind of results you're getting here. Okay. So once I move this guy, we have that blank split uh, space here. scaling it up one thing when creating this rock is you want to because we're just literally duplicating um, this mesh over and over you want to get something that's not too unique that way when you're duplicating it doesn't give the impression that you're just using the same rock over and over um, what you can do is you can if you're having trouble with that you can just create a few different variations but for the time and purpose of the tutorial, just keeping it just to one single rock. Cool, we might have a small little gap here, so I just wanna take away any of that stuff. And we can keep fiddling with this forever, but I think I'm just gonna leave it here. Maybe just move this guy slightly back a little bit. Cool. One other thing that we can do is we can actually do another duplicate here if we're having uh, some trouble here. So maybe move this guy back, move it back here. We'll probably just end up covering that little spot with foliage just to give the impression that something's there. Cool. So let's go ahead and unpin this guy and move on forward here. Once you're happy with your layout, let's go ahead and go back into that, um, that one directional light that we placed and let's go ahead and mess with those settings a little bit. Um, let's actually just go into the Hector, and now that we're in here, we can start messing with some fuse settings here. So I like using temperature. Uh, I feel it's a lot quicker than changing your light to be either like warm or cool. So let's go ahead and do that, this guy. And again, I'm just gonna start rotating this guy to kind of try to get some dramatic shadows or something like that. So thought that looks kind of interesting. Okay, maybe move. Cool, this might be more or less the kind of lighting that I had in the um, final scene. So we'll just keep it like that for now. Gonna mess with some of the source angle. Make sure cast shadow is on. At this point it's just kind of playing around with the different settings here. There are a few that I know I, I like turning on. So I'm just trying to find where those are here. Specular scale. Uh, the specular scale um, kind of helps the specular response on your object. So if you think you're getting too hot of highlights, feel free to turn that down. Uh, here we go, the shadow length. So by default, Unreal always sets this to zero. In my opinion, um, once you start uh, cranking this guy up to one, you'll notice like, for example, even here, if we have that as zero by default, we're not getting a lot of shadow based on the normal information. But once we start pushing this out, you can see now we're getting those nice shadows coming from the information that we had here. So always keep that in mind when you're turning this guy on. Ooh, and I'm liking, I'm actually liking this highlight that we're getting there. So I can move 
this guy a little bit. Cool, because you're controlling the camera now, any sudden movements, um, that's what your camera will be moving forward. So keep that in mind. Cool. All right. Let's bring in another part of, another big part of this um, just scene is just the overall fog. So let's go ahead and drop in some, I believe it was atmospheric. Sorry, not that one, exponential. There we go. And let's start tweaking these guys. I'm just gonna go ahead and plug in the same values that I used on our final scene, just because I wanna get as close to what our final um, look will be. So you can either plug in these values or um, mess around and try to find some cool, um, kind of look for your scene. So I'm just sampling off screen. So if you're wondering where I'm getting these colors, etc. Let's see, two. I'm just co copying some values as well. Okay, we're gonna turn on volumetric here. It's giving us some crazy results. Ooh, already, look at that. Man, that volumetric really, really does a number on this guy for sure. Cool. That's about it for the height here. So, or sorry for the exponential height fog. So that's looking pretty cool. Nice. You know, I might change, um, final look for this guy but for now I'm just gonna try to keep it or match it somewhat close here so let's go ahead and do that uh, one other thing that we can actually do is in our HDR uh, HDRI backdrop we do have a few options we can play with uh, the two that I mainly use um, I described one of them is changing the HDRI itself but you can also tweak the intensity of this guy so um, the HDRI affects a little bit of the lighting, so you can kind of see the reflection of it. But if we bring this down ever so slightly, we start getting some darker areas. So try to keep it similar to what I had in the um, in the final one as well. So I believe on the final one, I had a value of 0.75 here. Cool. Let's actually go back into the exponential height fog and maybe we can mess with some of these settings a little bit. So maybe mess with like 10 or something. Nope. There we go. What I want with the fog is I just want it to hide a little bit of what's going on. So, you know, make it feel like you want to go back in that area to see what's behind there. And already we're getting that kind of nice feel there too. Let's actually try to bring this guy down slightly. One other thing we can do is can actually bring down the color of this as well. So I'm just gonna sample off screen as well here. Cool. Let's 
go back into our fog and you see me um, kind of doing the same things. I'm kind of fighting and pushing and pulling stuff. You know, once you change, for example, some of the lighting, you might want to go back to the height and adjust it. And same thing with the height. If you change or tweak a little bit of it, you might want to change the lighting. So it's just a constant back and forth here. I'm trying to find um, the right values here. Like, cause I, I liked in the final that you can kind of see the silhouette of that guy. So, and let's actually, I'm going to choose my camera here. I'm going to unpilot it. I'm going to dock it here. Okay. And I'm going to move this guy over slightly. There we go. Okay. Let's unpin this guy. Let's go back into piloting this dude. Cool. Let's go back into our camera here. Directional light, yep. And let's see what we can do here. There was one instance. Ah, source angle, yeah. So you'll notice when we mess with the source angle, we're getting a sharper fall off here. So I try to keep this pretty high. One thing you'll note is that we're getting, um, we have the directional light in a certain angle where this is getting super dark. Uh, this is where I begin to introduce uh, a second directional light. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and then duplicate this guy. So copy. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move it on this side. And what I'm going to do with this guy is just let me move it to the side. So it's not sitting on top. Um, I'm going to turn off the shadows because I do not want any shadows being casted by this guy. All I want is I'm essentially using this guy to light up the shadows sli ever so slightly. So just start off at one here, but let's turn these guys on and off. You'll notice we have, we go from the super dark shadows. We turn this on slightly and now we're getting some interesting, um, just bringing up those shadows ever so slightly. Cool thing is that we can also rotate it and we can get some cool, uh, reflections here as well. So already we're starting to get something kind of interesting. Um, we might want to also, depending how, how on how it's affecting our scene, we might want to turn down the specularity of it as well. So let's actually go ahead and turn down the specularity of the main one here. Awesome. Cool. So I think at this point uh, would be a good opportunity to start painting in that foliage so to do that we're just going to go ahead and go into our modes we're going to go into foliage and here you'll get this dialog box asking you to drop in any foliage that you want to paint so we're just going to go back into our content browser and again i just have um, the two basic um, foliage pieces that we created from our last tutorial we just have the grass and the fern so let's go ahead and drop these guys in here Cool. And when you select um, each one, it gives you a different um, details pane and you can adjust the settings per different foliage. One thing that you can also do is that these check marks tell you which uh, foliage to paint. You can either paint all of them. So right now we have both uh, check boxes on or we can individually paint each separate piece of geo. So um, let's go ahead and do just the grass for right now. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is I'm just going to unpilot this guy because there might be some subtle changes we want to do on these guys. So let's go ahead and do that. Once we have this guy selected, all we have to do is hit the pain, paint, sorry, and we get this nice cursor with the bubble. We can hit our um, bracket keys, make it uh, larger or smaller, depending on how much you want to paint. So let's go ahead and just uh, do some brush strokes here. So, um, I'm holding down the left mouse and I'm just painting, but you'll notice that nothing's happening. And that's because if we go underneath here, 
all of our grass is being painted underneath. So why this is happening is due to the fact that um, uh, the tessellation, the, the foliage tool doesn't like tessellation. So even though you have these undulations and this change in silhouette and shape, all it thinks it's painting on is uh, your flat plane um, before it was tessellated. So what I like to do is I'm just going to go ahead and actually erase all this stuff. So let's try to get erase as much as we can. Right here, it'll tell you how many meshes are actually painted. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into Z offset and change this to maybe 10. This, this requires a little bit of tweaking based on um, how much tessellation and undulation you have. But let's go ahead and do that. One other thing that I want to do is I'm just going to bring this up to like 10,000 the highest just so we can kind of see what's going on here. So once we have that, we have to go back into paint and now let's go ahead and start painting. So now we're getting the expected result. I think this is a pretty good, um, the, the 10 is pretty good for these areas that are kind of seeping lower where the water is, but we're still not getting the grass on this kind of higher level where it's essentially where I'd like it to be. So I'm just going to control Z that really quick. Uh, I'm going to change this to 15. Maybe that'll give me the result I'm looking for. And let's do a brush stroke here. Again, um, still not where we want it to. At this point, you can either keep tweaking or uh, we could just leave it as is. I'm just going to tweak it one more time. See. I think that's pretty good. The pro the issue with the, the way the mesh is right now that requires quite a bit of um, messing with these parameters is not only do we have this higher plane, but we also have this lower plane. So we'll probably want to mess, go back and forth and mess with these values as we're painting. So let's go ahead and control Z that. And I'm actually going to move this down to maybe 7,500. Give us a little bit here. That's looking pretty cool. Maybe even lower here. I want something that's full, but not, we're still getting a little bit of you know, spacing here. Like that's pretty, that's pretty nice right there. So let's go ahead and go back into, um, or actually let's hit our camera actor by hitting select. Uh, oh, actually we have to get out of this mode. So let's go back in select mode, pin our camera, go back into modes, go to mesh paint and sorry, not mesh paint, uh, foliage. And let's go back into paint and now we can start doing our thing here. So cool. I'm just going to go wild back here because, you know, not, you probably won't go back here based on the shot of this guy. So just go kind of wild here. Something like that. Just a few clicks here and there to kind of fill up this spot. Whoa, it's a little bit intense there. Here. We don't want those showing up on the rocks, so Ooh, that's that's looking actually kind of cool. Let's try to fill up this gap here. But again, um, I think we're painting on some no, we're good. We're good. We can erase. And let's actually go into that camera and see what we're seeing. It's looking pretty cool. Let's go ahead and erase some of this stuff here a little bit. And let's go back into paint. Just subtle clicks at this point. Cool. Yeah, it's looking cool. All right, so maybe actually let's go ahead and erase some here. Still want it to feel somewhat believable here, so paint a little bit here. Yeah, I would say that that's pretty, that's a little bit better. Again, you can kind of tweak to your heart's desire, but for now, we're just going to move on. Uh, now that we have the grass, we're just going to do exact same thing with the fern this time. Um, I felt that painting each uh, foliage piece separately gave me a little bit more control and kind of picking and choosing where each piece 
will end up so that's why I did it that way if you guys want to paint everything at the same time feel free so let's go ahead and select this guy hit paint let's bring this up okay pretty intense there cool let's actually scale these down so we do have a, a few options to scale down the size of the mesh. So if we go into scale here, put these maybe to 0.5 possibly. You can change the max and min. Um, I'm just gonna do 0.75 here. See if this gives me the result I'm looking for. Yeah, that's looking pretty nice. Okay. Every time you control Z, all of your foliage might disappear and that's because it's recompiling the shaders. So keep that in mind. We're running into that issue where um, some of the foliage is actually going underneath. So let's see if we can figure out what's going on there. Okay. So we essentially have to change that, um, that setting as well on here. Um, let's do, I believe we found it. Let's look at the grass. Uh, looks like it was at 15. Because these are a little bit taller, let's try 17 for good measure here. And let's go to paint. That's looking cool. Yeah, I like that one. Happy little bush there. Cool. So let's again keep painting. Let's go back into our main camera. Now we can kind of get a better representation of what's going on here. Nope. <laughs> that one just keeps wanting to creep on through. actually gonna erase this one I like this one just because it, it's giving me an interesting silhouette towards the edge of the frame which I'm a big fan of um, so we can uh, I'll keep that one that one's kind of cool too actually I like stuff creeping out of frame because again it gives you that sense of there's more to the scene than there really is so let's go ahead and move back here yeah so with the shader of this guy, I do have a um, world space variation. So that's why we're getting those interesting colors coming through on like different areas. Um, that one's cool. All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and open that up just so you can guys, just so you guys can kind of see um, what is going on with that shader. I'm gonna go ahead and go into content and let's go into the materials. We're gonna open up our master foliage shader. So pretty standard stuff. Uh, most maps are actually plugged into just the respective inputs, but on the albedo and the transmittance is where I do have um, that world space variation. Um, just taking that world space variation um, node, I'm dividing that by a scalar parameter. And this is the size of that variation that we're gonna have. Um, basically what it's doing is it's taking this splatter map and what this splatter map is, is I basically went to, um, substance designer, chose, um, a clouds and then chose a gradient, plug that into a gradient, sorry, and chose a few random colors. So it gives me, um, this kind of map and what this map does inside the shader based on the position it is in the world. It's going to, if you were looking at almost at a top down, like if we painted, um, ferns over here versus ferns over here we might get some that are green as opposed to over here that are yellow if you guys can think of it that way um, I have a hue amount uh, parameter that controls the the hue of that discolor or sorry that variation so even though I'm choosing like green and yellow um, I want I might want to shift that slightly 
And I'm just using a blend overlay to blend that over our just regular Atlas texture, our Albedo. I'm using that same small graph here. I duplicated it and just plugged it into our transmittance. And our transmittance, again, pretty simple stuff plugged into our subsurface color. But here, I'm just controlling the tint of it, the brightness of the transmittance, and then um, I'm introducing that variation that we just talked about in the albedo. Again, blend overlay, controlling all that stuff. So let's go back in here. I'm gonna close this guy. So I would say I'm pretty happy with what's going on here. Um, let's go ahead and maybe mess with that initial directional light. So let's get out of this foliage paint mode hit select and maybe we can start messing with the brightness try to introduce a little bit more of what's going on here so put this guy in there we go set this to like 23 nice now we're getting some cool almost god rays effects and we're starting to get pretty close to what we have in our final scene um, at this point, I mean, it's really up to you guys to mess with the initial, um, what was that? The post-process volume. So we can change the colors, the contrast, the, um, you know, the overlays on the camera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so sorry, the film grain, all that, all that, uh, fun stuff. So let's go ahead and go into this guy. Um, one thing that I do like adding just to the overall post-process volume is I'm actually going to try to find it here. Let's see. It's what I do on every single one of um, the environments. Uh, let's see. I just got to find where it is here. If you guys are hearing that, that's my scroll wheel trying to frantically look for it here we go post uh post process materials so i'm just gonna hit this guy and asset reference and what i ended up doing was if we go back into the content browser um we have our let's go into materials i actually don't know if i added this into this one i'm trying to find it i might not actually have it in here oh no there it is we have this sharpened material. So what this does, it just sharpens the overall look of your final uh, screenshot. Um, I basically just, um, sorry, we can open up this guy. Um, it's just uh, something I found online. So feel free to, I believe if you type in UE4 sharpen, you'll find it, but it's just a quick uh, material parameter that you can plug into your, um, your post-process volume. So let's go ahead and just bring that guy in here. So just plug this guy in here and kind of see what's going on. Like, let me see, it's super subtle, I think. Let's reset this. Like even here, like you might not see it on the recording, but once you have it in there, you can do some crazy stuff. Like I'm not gonna mess, well, I'll just mess with it here. I believe it's at a 0.5. So if I, let's go ahead and just crank this up pretty intensely kind of see it start getting that weird effect here. So maybe I'll just leave that 0.75 or something. Cool. So let's get out of game mode here. Everything's looking pretty cool. So let's maybe mess with this directional lights. Ooh. Maybe we can get that same highlight that we had in the, there we go. Just wanted that same highlight that we were getting in um, our final uh, scene here. So let's hit G. And at this point, let's go ahead into our post-process volume and start m tweaking these guys. So I'm just gonna go through a few of the um, parameters that I tweaked in the final uh, material. So again, feel free to either um, follow along on some of these tweaks or honestly i i just uh it'd probably be better just see what you guys come up with um i know this is probably the funnest part of the whole tutorial is just um changing the different colors and just messing with a bunch of this stuff gives you like a really cool um look to it in my opinion so 
this guy up slightly here. Let's go into color grading. Let's turn these guys on. Just gonna plug in some values here. Cool, we got that nice warm tone. And copy this guy. Saturation, paste, cool. Again, I'm just pasting off screen here. So, oh, let's turn this guy on. So, but it'll give you an idea of what is going on here. Well, it looks like some crazy stuff happened here. So again, it's one of those instances where when we mess one uh, parameter or one little tweak, it's gonna affect uh, the rest of it. So there we go, that's looking pretty sweet. Gamma. And again, this is all under the color grading tab here. Let's go to paste. Turn on this gain. Paste. Cool. Uh, the only other thing I believe that I messed with here on the shadows was the gain, it looks like. Paste this guy. Copy under midtones. Didn't touch the midtones. Didn't touch the highlights. Um, just because I didn't touch these doesn't mean you guys can't uh, feel free. Maybe you guys will get some interesting and cool results out of it. Color tint as well. Nice. Cool. I think that's pretty much everything that I touched on this guy. So let's just lower some of these collapse some of these kind of see what's going on oh feel free to turn on the bloom as well the bloom gave like a pretty cool result here it's looking interesting yeah so I mean we can mess with these parameters uh, for days but you know uh, feel free to just mess with these and see what kind of results you guys can come up with I think I might actually change the tint of this guy like in that kind of greener feel here. Cool. And finally, the last thing before we finish this tutorial is just messing with our final camera settings. So we go into our cinema camera actor here. Let's go go to the very top. And again, I like to change, you know, changing the width and the height can really give you a dramatic feel like I like how changing the width introduced a little bit of these rocks um, we could turn on some of the let's see the depth of field here so here we go this is a preview of what's getting uh, depth of fielded out so keeping that in mind oh oh wow that's actually pretty cool zooming in slightly will give us a nice um, result here Bring in this. Let's bring this down a tad here. Oh, there we go. Okay, maybe we can. We're getting some insane depth of field here. So bear in mind when you're adjusting these values, they are super sensitive. So. There we go. And let's, can we increase? Oh, sorry about that. Can we maybe 0.5? Yeah, there we go. So now we're getting that um, depth of field out there. So, whoa. So just play around with these guys. Um, it'll, it could give you um, your shots a little bit more realism to it with the nice depth of field and it'll just look cool for your final um, for your final portfolio shots. 
And that about covers it for this tutorial. Um, I hope you guys learned something. Feel free to share your final images. Would really like to see what you guys come up with. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.